it's time to give you the verdict of eight months using the Mammoth Trion Spine 50 as my camera bag. Hello, good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today's video, a little bit different to some of the other ones that I've done, there's a good reason for that. Um, I want to talk to you about um, a piece of gear that I've acquired and um, it's probably turning out to be the best camera um, bag, rucksack um, for landscape photography and hiking that I've ever owned. But it's a little bit different um, than your normal solution. When I bought this piece of equipment probably about eight, nine months ago now, I wasn't quite sure how it was going to work out, whether it was going to be successful. So I thought it was a good idea to actually go back, look at it eight months on and tell you guys from the point of view of using it for a number of months and a number of trips, whether or not my objectives were met. But camera bags and rucksacks, I guess, are one of those sort of evil necessities in that they're very, very expensive. Although they're great for keeping your gear in, they don't actually add anything to the quality or anything of your photography. They're just a means of getting the equipment to where you need it to be. So the objectives that I had, other than get a shiny new camera bag, because my old one was um, wearing out after a good number of years service, was to find something that was an improvement on my old camera bag. In as much that functionally it was absolutely fine, um, but it wasn't particularly comfortable. I wanted something that was going to be able to carry the heavy loads that I do over a reasonable distance um, with a lot more comfort. So that was the first thing I wanted to improve on the comfort of my old camera bag system. Easy access. Um, sometimes the weather's not that great. Um, sometimes where we're standing or sitting or working isn't maybe as easy to sort of get your camera bag out and upend it and get all the gear out. So I needed something that was easy access. And for me, something that was quite important, though to be honest, since I've had it, I haven't done a lot of it, was to have a bag that would enable me to carry um, enough gear, not only to sort of do my photography, but also to get out a reasonable distance, go on some reasonable length hikes, and also um, possibly do a bit of wild camping. So it need to have a large capacity, uh, but in a very adaptable and comfortable way. And also very importantly, value for money. Because my photography exploits are, you know, part funded by the YouTube channel, um, the lectures that I do and everything as well. So I don't have a huge amount of cash to throw at it. And most of what I make is, it goes back into the photography. So your support of this channel um, is really, really appreciated. But, um, but yeah, so value for money had to be another consideration as well. And when you look at some of the mainstream camera bags like Shimoda, Low Pro, um, F-Stop, for example, you know, you're, you're going to be spending something which to the time you buy an internal camera unit of upwards of, say, £400, um, sometimes 500 um, in, in the UK at the moment to, to meet those needs and that isn't the kind of money that I had to spend on this. So let's get a bit further, we're going to go up into the woods, maybe find somewhere to take a photograph and go into a location I've been to before and uh, when we set that photograph up we'll unpack the camera bag and uh, show you some of its features and kind of give the game away as to what my final solution was. So come on, let's go. Just had a fantastic um, 30 seconds frozen watching a deer by the, the tree line. I did try and get my 75 to 300 mil lens out, but uh, by the time I'd done that, the deer had cleared off. I'm not surprised. I'm not much of a uh, wildlife photographer. We'll, we'll leave that to Morton Hilmer. So anyway, I found a spot where, um, where I think I can uh, set up and, and show you a bit more about this bag. So I'm going to um, do that. So I've started carrying a an old poncho in the top of my camera bag 
and uh, we'll get into why I do that in a minute because it, it's partly because of this bag that I've started doing it again. Um, so let's talk about the outside to begin with shall we. So one of the features I needed on the bag was to have somewhere where I could strap a tripod. I've got it strapped to the side. Now one of the concerns that I had about it was whether or not um, it would be strong enough um, because of this zip that runs all the way around. Um, I was a little bit worried that it would put a bit of strain on the zip. So I've actually um, put an old belt around it just to hold the whole thing together. And I think that just takes the tension off the zip and hopefully it'll uh, extend the life of the bags. So it literally is, if I get up here for you, literally is just an old, an old belt which sort of blends in reasonably well and does that job for me. So let's get that off the, um, off the bag first. Of course it is a little bit of messing about um, having a few extra straps on there but to be honest it's no big deal so that's the tripod the other thing I wanted to have was somewhere to carry somewhere to sit um, so everybody watches my channel and know that when I'm out shooting my photographs I really do enjoy um, being able to sit down and have a stool to sit on have a cup of coffee and something to eat so on the other side of the bag my trusty little um, stool sits down there quite well so let's get that set up as well but that's generally all that I needed on the outside of the bag. The reason I selected this particular camera bag, um, or rucksack should I say, was for comfort. Now this is a Mammoth um, 50 Trion um, spine. The most comfortable rucksack I ever had um, was probably about 20 odd years ago now, maybe 30 years ago. It was designed in such a way that the um, back moved and it worked with you so it was set in such a way that the actual straps would move and as you were walking it would it would follow you rather than you fight against it and i was looking for a similar back system and the tree on spine has exactly that if i turn this around you'll be able to, be able to see so this panel here on the back if i just move this um, you'll be able to see how how that actually has that movement in it um, and this system allows the whole camera the pack to move with your body and I can say that actually this is far more comfortable than my other um, camera bag that I was working with before so on the first point of comfort yes it certainly meets all of those needs I need to get my coffee out and that brings us to accessibility in a way because one of the other things I wanted to be able to do was get to the bag nice and easily, get things out easily. And one of the things I needed to be able to get really easily out the top was um, food, coffee, without taking everything else out of the bag. So it's got this situation in the top where I can quite easily um, put some gear on the top of the rucksack, not inside, and, uh, and get into there. So let's have a coffee. So whilst I'm having my um, cup of coffee, I thought I'd talk a little bit about some of the, the costs. The Mammoth 50 Trion Spine, um, which I decided to purchase, I can buy in the UK currently for about £225. And that was a really, really good price. So it may not be around at that price forever. Um, but you're going to be looking at spend, spending maybe 225 to 250 in the UK. Maybe a bit of postage and packaging on there. That's roughly what we're what we're looking at. Now, if I'd gone down the traditional camera bag route, and who knows, you won't find out towards the end of this video whether I did or didn't, or whether I'm going to be changing what I've got. I would have gone for probably a product from Shimoda or F-Stop, which are two brands which I rate really, really highly. And at the moment, if you wanted to get a 50 liter Shimoda or a 50 liter F-Stop. Um, with an ICU to go inside, you're going to be talking about something in the region of maybe um, £380. And obviously, there's something to note that does include um, the cost of a ICU as well. Whereas with what I'm using here, I'll show you my solution later on, but I didn't have to buy an ICU for this bag. Some of you may need to do that, so that's something worth considering. So in all, for my own personal solution, um, I save probably in the region of 125 
to £150. So that's fairly significant, you know, that's a weekend away doing photography, it's a decent 10-stop um, ND filter or something else that you can put your money to. So it is, it is quite significant for me. So that's a, that's a, a win for the, a win for the uh, mammoth. So I think one of the best ways to talk about the bag is to start getting some gear out and, and use it um, as it's intended to be used. And as we're doing that, I'm going to start to get the gear out to set up a photograph and uh, we'll go through some of the features of the bag as we do that. Get down here so you can you can see me. Now, one of the negatives with this bag um, that I do want to talk about is <laughs> one of its strong points as well in a way. Um, one of the things which was really important to me was the fact that I needed something that was going to be really easy to get into and get the gear out of. My last camera bag, you had to lay it on its side, um, open up the side of the bag, and then you could access the um, ICU through the side of it. Now that was great um, in, in some ways, but the other problem that I had, of course, was that what that really meant was that it was it, it tended to roll over. So if you're on some uneven ground, it wasn't that stable. Um, and if you weren't careful, if you left it open, you would turn around and find that it had rolled over and spilled your camera gear out onto the uh, onto the ground, which obviously defeats the object of keeping it in a nice safe bag. So this needed to be something that I could lay down flat um, and access the ICU. I didn't want to access it through the top of the bag because that sometimes means pulling absolutely everything out. So it needed to be um, a bag where I could open it on the panel. The best solution would have been a back panel opening bag, i.e. the part that opens is actually the bit that sits against your back. But that's not possible with this design of bag. The reason it's not possible is because of the back system. I rated that more important. What it meant is I had to go for the version that has a front opening panel. And that's why I put down the sheet on the floor before I started, um, just to keep the back of the camera bag clean. Otherwise, you end up picking it up and putting all that dirt, um, sometimes moisture, rain or whatever it might be, up against your uh, up against your clothing, which you might not always want. So, that's the first downside. One of its strong points is actually uh, one of its weaknesses as well. But, you know, everything's a compromise, isn't it? I talk about that all the time on this channel, about how Photography is about compromise. So let's get inside the bag and see what we've got. So to make it easy to access this camera bag, we've got a nice zip that runs all the way around the sides of it. And zips work both sides, straight down this side, straight down the other side. So it can be easily accessed. You could, if you wanted to, um, just partially pull these zips down so if you didn't want to get to some of the camera gear you don't have to you can get to your jackets coats or whatever else you've got inside the bag at the top so it really works quite well in those respects but if you want to zip it right the way down you can um, and that's pretty much normally how I use the bag if I'm just stopping to get food water extra clothing or whatever out of the bag I normally don't open this I normally just open it through the top of the bag like I would with a traditional rucksack. Um, inside the bag, this is a, the ICU that I've got here is from my previous camera system. It's probably not the best option, to be honest, and you could probably go on Amazon and for maybe 30, 40 quid, pick up a far better solution to it than this, so that's worth bearing in mind. But I like this, and the reason I like it is because I can actually take this out, um, and it works as a small backpack and bag on its own. Now, there is an advantage to that. Somebody asked me a question um, about my previous um, video. In fact, they only asked me a week or so ago um, about whether I'd taken this on an aeroplane. Well, no, I haven't. But with this taken out, this bag compressed down and fold quite flat, bottom of a suitcase, and I just take the ICU on board um, the aircraft with me, which is far smaller than, than carry-on luggage. Um, so that works really, really well. 
So the ICU um, sits in the bottom. Sometimes I'll put some other bits in the bottom of the camera bag, um, some other bits and pieces down there. I've got some medical kit, um, some spares and bits and pieces in there. So that, that works really, really well. Um, we've got a big zip, a big pocket on the inside in here. Um, I'm keeping sort of like a cover for the rucksack in case there's any, in case it rains. I've got some dry bags and stuff in there as well to put over the cameras and everything. So most of it's inside. Inside here, I've got room for, um, there's a cloth. I've got some camping gear in here. I've got my cups, um, gas cylinder, small stove and everything on there as well. So that works really, really well. And I've got a, another fleece and I've got sometimes a carry a, a, a towel in there for Ruby as well. So on a general trip, I can get all my food, all my water, all my outdoor gear and everything on here that I actually need and like i said if i probably went for a slightly lighter and smaller um, icu i could probably compress this down even much further one of the things that i heard about this camera bag and i've read some reviews it is an alpine pack it's designed for people um, cross-country skiing climbing etc was they were concerned about the the inside of the bag and the fact that it wasn't maybe quite as robust as it could be with the lining so what I've actually done is I've put um, a, a, an old mattress an old foam I've just cut it to shape and use that as a bit of a liner to give it a bit of strength so that works really really well so in terms of accessing gear I can open this up unzip the ICU open that up as well and that gives me full access to all of my um, camera gear two lens lenses that I carry filters small accessory bag and of course the camera itself and then in the lid of the ICU itself I've got somewhere where I, I tend to put spent batteries um, cloths and different things that I need to keep clean and tidy so that's pretty much um, access to the bag dealt with so I'm going to set up um, a potential pictures that, that's forming and then we'll talk a little bit more about this camera bag so I've been actually busy doing nothing waiting for the light to change and take this photograph but anyway whilst I'm waiting um, for a few more minutes just to see if something does kick off I'll tell you a bit more about the camera bag so one of the um, key elements of this bag, although I haven't done much for a little while, was that I wanted to be able to carry lots of gear in it. I wanted to be able to do some wild camping. And for that end, it needed to be adaptable because I didn't want a massive bag that was huge um, all the time. I wanted something that I could collapse down a bit and give me a bit of room to do that. Now, there are some great um, options from Shimoda, for example, with the roll top bags that do that really, really well. And that was probably for that reason towards the top of my list from camera bags for a long long time but it was the cost and it was the comfort aspects and wanting this particular back system that drove me to go to look at this way so on the final point of does this carry a lot of gear does it do it comfortably um, is it expandable let's just have a quick look at, at how we've achieved that so this bag has got a fairly large um I'd say fairly large it, it, it's got an expandable um top on it where you can expand these straps the lift the the, the top of it will lift up a considerable way um and it gives you a lot of extra room on the top of the bag so in this state it's really quite small not too bad at all um, quite manageable works reasonably well I may actually go down and have a look at the Trion 35 um, spine or maybe just the Trion 35 on its own because it's a little bit lighter um, when I get my van set up um, because it's just a little bit too big to get inside the van. So if I'm not going to wild camp and I'm going to use the van as a base instead, then I may go for a slightly smaller bag. But back to this one. If we open up this lid, uh, we have got this really good expandable sort of pocket on the top. Um, and this isn't its full extent it will come up much higher than this but it allows you um, to expand the top of the bag and give you much more height to it so if I want to pack more gear in here this expands right the way um, hi folks <laughs> it expands right the way up to here and uh, I'm not saying I would ever use that height in the bag um, but it's there if I want to use it so I guess 
Um, it looks like the light's not going to change. I'm not going to take my photograph, but I will show you what I was trying to set up anyway. Um, that it comes down to making a final um, decision on whether this bag is keep it or sell it and go back to a more traditional option. Okay, for the verdict. Take a look at this last photograph. Finally, the light broke out and I got what I wanted. This tree, stone wall, all nicely lit against a dark background with a gray sky in the background as well. Not sure how it's gonna come out. I'm getting overly excited, so maybe it's not gonna be worth it. But look at this photograph, then come back for my verdict on the camera bag. Okay, so where were we? The camera bag. Um, a few things that I wanted to, to talk about really, and a few things I wanted to, to sum up. There was four things that I was really interested in. I'm gonna forget them all, I know, but I'll, I'll try and summarize the main points. The first thing was that I could remember back to a time when I had a really comfortable hiking sack, and I wanted this to be as good as, if not better, than that camera bag, I wanted it to really perform well and do a good, good, good job. Is it comfortable? Yes, it is comfortable. Um, I regularly carry 17 to 20 kilos of gear in this bag on normal shoots, on a day out in a national park on Dartmoor or whatever, and when I'm wild camping, that can easily increase between say 23 and 24, and it does it remarkably well. So comfort, it gets a thumbs up from me. In terms of um, accessibility and ease of use, it gets us a, a semi thumbs up because it's not ideal in that I've got to lay the camera bag down on the ground. Um, sometimes the back can get a bit wet and uh, it would be ideal if it was back opening. But that's a trade-off. You know, I can't have that back system and a back opening pack. So a semi thumbs up, but basically I wouldn't change it it's good for that value for money well like I said on my own purchase I probably saved myself because I already had an ICU in the order of hundred and fifty pounds that's a phenomenal saving so financially good value for money yes definitely really really good overall I would say this is met its requirements I'm really pleased with it fantastic bag it's a keeper. I'm not going to get rid of it or change it anytime soon. Um, I may even look at another bag, but a slightly smaller size and slightly lighter, where I'll be able to use the same size ICU inside it. Um, so it'll make this system that I've got even more adaptable because I'll have a different um, size bag for other tasks as well that works in exactly the same way. So if you're looking for a camera bag um, and you're looking for a cost effective, comfortable, solution that works really really well check out the mammoth trion 50 spine um, there is the mammoth fear 50 trion without the back system it's slightly lighter and it is back opening so you might want to look at that system instead so thanks for watching sorry the video went on for a little bit too long um, if you've got your um, own thoughts on different carrying systems backpacks or whatever then please add it put it in the comments share it with the community so we can all benefit from, benefit from your knowledge as well um, next video will hopefully be a um, more camera photography outdoor based picture because we've done a couple of van videos now we've had the uh, and we've had the the rucksack one as well so it's time for me to get out and do some serious photography at some point so i'm going to have a have a think about some locations during the week and hopefully i'll see you um see you next week with the next video um bye for now